All righty. Hello, Tanisha. Yes, here. All right. Um, I'm just going to put you pause for one quick moment. Okay. Ready. All right, Mike Trudeau. Hey, LeBron. Uh, Frank was saying that in the that you sw you switched some of the spacing for the screen roll action just from last night in Golden State, uh, and you thought the Wolves had a hard time picking that up in the fourth quarter. Just wondered if you could be and to what degree you could be specific about how you were manipulating that and what you saw and, and what was different. Um, well, obviously we had a play that was working well for us, so. You know, you want to kind of go back to it over and over and see if they change it up or see if they stop it. But we have so many reads, and it's up to me to make all those reads. And uh, in the fourth quarter, obviously, uh, I was able to, to find Trez for the majority of those reads. Also be able to find Wes uh, for, for corner three as well. Um, just trying to dictate um, and give me uh, give whatever defense gives us. Uh, just try to, you know, put the, the ball on time on target, make the right reads. And and, and I was able to do that, um, especially in, the, in that fourth when I was when I entered the game. Uh, Tress said in the walk-off interview that he credited for his hands playing football in high school and also some track and field stuff like shot put and discus. Uh, you, of course, played football. Just wondered what your thought was on play, uh, young athletes playing other sports, how that evolves and how that can develop, something like that, and what you see with Trez in that context. Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, a, it's all about hand-eye coordination. You get that when you're a kid and you, you're playing uh, touch football, you're playing free frog, you're playing uh, intramural sports and things of that nature. You get that high uh, – the hand-eye uh, coordination. Um, and then with football, you're able to uh, catch the ball in, in, in tight spaces or in contact, you know, and, and be able to finish through contact. And, you know, me being a receiver myself, you know, playing through, you know, you know linebackers coming over the top or, or safeties, corners, uh, free safety, strong safeties, and still having to catch the ball on contact, you know, it definitely helps out uh, when you make the transition into basketball. Kyle. Hey, LeBron, obviously a lot of things offensively Trez does, we've seen him do for a long time, but um, he was saying yesterday that, that he's really, uh, you know, been doing a lot of film work and, and taking a lot of input from his teammates to, to get blended in defensively. What have you seen him doing maybe behind the scenes to get more integrated on that end? Well, because of this, um, the season and how it's constructed, you know, there's not much time to practice uh, and that's for all 30 teams. Um, so the film sessions um, individually as a team um, is uh, is the most important this year. Um, and obviously it's very important, you know, all the time. But, you know, this this year even more because we can't be on the floor much because of uh, the protocols and the testings and things of that nature. It doesn't allow us to be on the floor as a team a lot. So, you know, the film session is the uh, best opportunity for you to take that and then implement it into a game situation. And uh, Trez has been doing that. Dan. Hey, LeBron, happy 316. Good sure. <laughs> Appreciate it. Um, in terms of Trez, uh, last year, you know, his relationship with Lou on court, Lou Williams was obviously like, I mean, you could see it. Um, how hard is it to form that kind of bond uh, with, a, with a pick and roll partner? And have you seen something over maybe the last two weeks or three weeks where he looks a little more comfortable with guys kind of in that role? No, I think he's, uh, he's definitely growing more custom. And, and obviously, you know, that – dynamic duo and him and Lou for those years um, was just, I mean, it was exceptional. You know, Lou Will having the threat to come off and score, but also Lou Will having the threat to make that pocket pass and Trez with his ability to roll and finish and catch and finish was uh, just very dynamic for so many years. So, you know, um, you know, I automatically, you know, when we got him, I knew we could, it could be something that we could um, exploit because uh, my ability to play the pick and roll game, my ability to pass the ball, his ability to catch and finish. So, um, I think as of late, uh, we, we know where we're, uh, you know, where we are on the floor. Uh, we know the sets that we're in. And, uh, you know, he's doing a hell of a job of being able to set screens for me, get me down here, and I'm just trying to put it on time on target for he can just get to his, uh, get to his game. Okay. Hey, LeBron, I know comparison can be the thief of joy, and so I don't necessarily want to have you compare Talon Horton Tucker to any specific player, but on consecutive nights – he plays against a game that has James Wiseman in it tonight, Anthony Edwards in it. And both those nights, even though he was a second round draft pick, he was turning heads just as much as, as those marquee talents. When you look at him, I just asked Kuz about this too. Can you see like 
a few steps beyond where he is with this team? And could there be something special ahead for Town Horton Tucker? I mean, it's something we've talked about all year. And I mean, let's let's, let's be honest. Um, if you go back in the draft and redo the draft from last year, Taylor Horn Tucker would not go in the second round. Um, so uh, we're, we're super duper lucky um, and, and um, you know, and, and blessed to be able to, to grab him uh, when we were able to grab him, you know, out of Iowa State. Um, so, you know, his, his ability to, um, to get downhill, um, to read, um, you know, you know, either, you know, his ability to get to the lane and, and finish or his ability to make the, you know, the extra passes. Um, you know, he's a big guard, but with great handle, with great poise and great balance, um, you know, and, um, you know, you just mentioned those other guys. I mean, this is, like I said, this is Taylor's rookie year too, um, you know, pretty much. Um, so, you know, he's learning. Uh, he's con- going to continue to get better, um, but he's a, a, a damn good uh, player right now and he's going to just continue to get better and better. Um, Gary. LeBron, um, can you discuss your partnership with the Fenway Sports Group and taking partial ownership of the Red Sox, what that means to you, to your brand, to kind of your, you know, and then delving into baseball? What do you think of the game of baseball and what kind of fingerprints can you put on this? Uh, well, first of all, it's uh, great to be with such a great group um, with FSG. Um, you know, they've done so many great things over the years and uh, just that collective group of people. Um, they're just amazing to be partnered with, um, partners with. Um, you know, as far as the, the Red Sox, um, you know, obviously a historical uh, franchise. And, um, you know, we know the history of the, uh, you know, the World Series championships they've, you know, brought back home to Boston and the players that's come through there and the legacy that they hold in that, in that area. So um, I think for me and, and for my partner, Maverick, uh, to be uh, the first two, uh, you know, black men to be, uh, you know, a part of that ownership group. Um, in the history of that franchise, um, I think it's pretty damn cool. Um, you know, it gives us, it gives me and 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 people that look like me, um, you know, hope and inspiration that they can be um, in a position like that as well. Um, that it can be done. Uh, it gives my kids at my at my I Promise School uh, more and more inspiration as well. Um, but it's it's a great day for myself, uh, for my family, for my for my for my for my, my school. Uh, for my business partner, Maverick Carter, and everyone that has something to do with our with our group, um, you know. But it's a it's a, it's a pretty um, amazing thing, and, and for me to continue to build my my portfolio um, off the floor, um, also in a beautiful game like baseball. So, um, you know, thanks for the question, Gary. Um, last question, Mark Medina. Hey, Le- LeBron, and kind of lieu of that, would you consider it a long-term goal whenever your career is over to be part of an NBA ownership group? Yeah, I've always said that. Um, my goal is to, to own a team, um, own an NBA team. i got so much to give to the game. Um, I know what it takes uh, to win at this level. Um, I know talent. I um, also know how to run a business um, as well. And, uh, you know, so that is my goal. My goal is to own an NBA franchise. And... Um, you know, it'll be sooner than later. Appreciate it. Thank you.